I guess this counts as taking my tent out to dry. Oh, hello. This is Drew with Michigan Adventure Life. And this is John. And we're out here at the Sulac Campground on the Pier Marquette River. On the National Forest side, and we're camping and fishing. Yep, we're on the National Forest side instead of the State Forest side because it's a shared use area. We can currently camp on the National Forest side, but not the State Forest side. So we're just camped right across from this quarter mile river access run, and we're gonna get some rods ready, you know, set up camp, make dinner, and uh, try and get some fish. So, you know, thanks for joining us. Some would argue I use too many sleeping pads, but we're car camping and I don't like being uncomfortable or cold. Come here. Come here. Oh, and there we go. All the Kara's stuff. And the comfy pad. Covered in dog hair, but whatever. There we go, home sweet home. Come on, do you like the tent? Do you like the tent? Do you just go curl up in my sleeping bag and go to sleep tonight? So John and I are gonna start a fire at some point and think about dinner, and then we're gonna talk about some of the stuff we're gonna do uh, when we fish tomorrow. Like so many My Adventure Life meals, this one begins with finding firewood. I think we decided we're doing ribs tonight, which means we're going to need a decent amount of firewood to uh, slow cook those. Because slow cooking is the only way to go with ribs, right? There we go. We got some firewood we bought, and we got some firewood we collected. And there's our fire pit, and we can start getting those ribs ready to go. John's just starting that fire up for us. It's going to take about an hour, hour and a half to get the coals to where we want them. Slow cook those ribs. And Kara's just guarding us to keep us safe. What are your pro tips to starting a good fire? Oh, make sure you prep for it, get in the small stuff. Make sure you have something to actually start the fire with, whether it's a lighter or matches. And having some fat wood or lint or birch bark to actually get it going goes a long way too. But just prepare for it and know that you're going to always use more wood than you think you will. It's easy when you're prepared, man. Okay, so I want these ribs to fit in a Dutch oven, so I'm going to have to split the rack, probably about there. We're going to take some of this desert heat dry rub. We're going to just fit way better in a Dutch oven like this than if we tried to do the whole rack bent around, which we've done before, but is not ideal. We're just going to let those sit and soak that up while the fire goes down and then we have to chop some onions and mash some garlic. 
So there's our Dutch oven lined with some tin foil. We've got our onions in there. We've got our fresh garlic all chopped up. We're gonna take a set of ribs and put them on down. I'm gonna take another set of ribs and put them on down. That's about the perfect size. I'm spaced out just a little. There we go. And we're gonna take the probably just the rest of this because there's not much desert heat left and just give it another quick. There we go. Now we pop that lid on there, put it on the fire for a couple hours. The nice thing about the Dutch oven is we don't have to keep as much an eye on it as if it was just cooking right on the grate. And every once in a while we'll just make sure it's not burning. That's about it. It's a cool cup. Let's take a look at that cup. Ooh, yeah, that looks cool. I like it. I need one. I like it. Just gonna look in on the ribs real quick. Oh, I would definitely say they're getting there. It would probably another half hour. Oh, they smell amazing. Gonna have some rice with our ribs. Oh, that was what I was trying to avoid. And then our squirrel cooker is just gonna hold that pot there. I'm gonna have to top it off with water as it boils, but you know. Probably just take 20 minutes instead of 10. Oh, okay, let's check these ribs out now that we, uh... Oh, yeah, I mean, the bone... <laughs> Some of the bones have already literally fallen out. <laughs> I think we're done. Let's get to the table. It's that bone I pulled out. I would definitely say they are done. Oh, it smells really good. You can tell we burnt all the onions and garlic on the bottom, and I don't even... It's gonna add to it. It saved the meat. Uh, bone apple tea. Oh, look at that. This is gorgeous. This is how ribs should be. It's just be yanking bones right out of them and eating handfuls of meat. We're gonna settle down here, eat our ribs. Enjoy our dinner. How's your ribs and rice? Pretty damn good. Hell yeah. Oh, and someone's super happy with their dinner. Because it turns out, John and I cannot each eat a bag of rice and a half slab of ribs. Always you quit, sweetie. I took the bones out. I only give her one bone, and I watch her eat it because they splinter a little bit. But you know, we're just going to do that. She's going to watch her eat. We're gonna work on building that fire up a little bit so we can hang out. So there's our fire built back up. John and I and Kara are just hanging out after that delicious meal. I'm stuffed. I am stuffed. I imagine Kara's stuffed. She ate a lot. So we're just gonna enjoy this fire and drink some more rum. It's cooling off. The bugs have uh, gone away for the night, which is nice. We're just gonna hang out for a while, guys. Maybe have some more rum. Maybe have some more rum. Night, guys.